All right, everyone, here we go. Launching, 72% throttle. It's pulling 35, 33 amps. I launch my planes hard so that they get into the air. I do not, if I throw it weak, I don't have to worry about it. We'll go over a couple of these gauges real quick. We got the cell voltage on the top left. Then we have my uh, amp hours used. This is how much of the battery pack I've used. Do a little spin. Next up we have what is called the amp hour per mile gauge. This is like my, effic my efficiency gauge. The lower the number, the more efficient the plane is. Next is the flight load I'm in. Right now I'm in manual. Then we have my flight controller temperatures, how many satellites I have locked. And then the rest speaks for itself. The bottom there is my, bottom right is my DJI information. And then that battery is the uh, pack voltage, which is read by DJI. And the very bottom in the middle is my distance from home too as well. Let's go ahead and do a big old long loop. This plane is so much fun to fly. This swordfish is very agile. It can go slow, it can go somewhat fast. Um, you get around the 70 mile an hour mark, it gets a little unstable. This is a perfect evening, by the way. There's hardly any wind, there's a sunset. I'm not getting eaten alive by mosquitoes while I'm flying, which was surprising. You're gonna see I have a 3D speed. That 3D speed is to let me know if I'm, uh, how fast I'm going if I'm going up and down, like vertical or descending because I'm not going over the ground, so I really don't have a ground speed, which is what the GPS speed is. A little loop-de-loop. -loop. If you take it easy with this plane, you can fly for a long time. So right now, I just pulled the throttle back. We're pulling four amps. If I kept it at this, I could probably fly this plane for well over a half hour. Of course, we have our pan and tilt camera. We're gonna show you some neat tricks you can do with that here in this video. This gives you a great view. We'll come back down to this creek run here. I have my pan and tilt mounted, um, you know, right behind the cockpit. Let's see if I can cut through here, yeah, yeah. I do that because it keeps all, it, it keeps the weight centered on this plane. I have found with previous swordfishes that if I mount my camera right on the front, it is a lot of weight and a lot of leverage to get this thing to do flips, to climb, and uh, so I just have it mounted here. It's a great perspective too as well. And we're just flying low. Such a great plane. Zoom over that tree. You're gonna see a little orange thing come up right there. That's just my DJI, um, it's just a warning on signal. And that's just because it's going through a bunch of trees. I'm flying very low right now. And again right there. So we're gonna do all kinds of cool stuff in this video. I'm gonna do a stall test, show you how to, a uh, really cool acro trick that you can do flying uh, upside down inverted. Uh, this battery pack can pull 20 amps continuously. Now it'll drain this battery, but this will give us, you know, lots of authority to do whatever we want. There's me just kind of working the camera, showing you all the different views. Again, those are those Velox uh, 1750 KV motors in purple. We'll bring this back down. So now we're flying inverted in acro mode. 
Nice thing about this is we can pan our camera or tilt our camera down and now it looks like we just have a rear, it looks like we have like a belly camera mounted. So if you wanna get some great ground footage, this is the way to do it. And I can, I can now pan it and it almost looks like it's a side camera. Because we're in acro mode, the plane is holding itself pretty well upside down. This is a fun little trick I like doing. Flying upside down inverted like that is weird. I am using the, the artificial horizon to maintain altitude. Um, I don't really show my altitude anymore on my videos. Uh, I wonder why. Now I'm just, I'm testing my angle mode. I was just going full stick left, full stick right and it came right back. What I like to do is on a nice day when there's no wind, I always run a little auto tune. This is a great time. You know, I'm always adding stuff to the plane, moving stuff around, pan and tilt camera, so on and so forth. This is just a good time to do this. And the way I do it is I put it in acro mode and right now I'm just going full stick left, right, up, down, and um, I'm just doing this a whole bunch. The more you do it, the longer you do it, the better your tune can be. So I'll go ahead and we'll fast forward and save you the boring stuff here. All right, time to zip around. I love flying low to the ground. I love just like, I'm a racer. I race dirt bikes, I race sport bikes. I love racing. And I wish I could do like a Red Bull Air Race course. It'd be so fun. But I love zipping around the ground. It's one of my favorite things to do. I like being close to stuff. Okay, so let's do a climb here. I'm gonna climb. I'm gonna do this in Acro, then I'm gonna switch to Horizon. So I got my, I'm gonna put this thing up close to 20 amps and pretty much what we can do, now I'm in Horizon, we can pretty much almost go vertical with this plane. It's not straight up and down, but at 17 amps, I can just, you know, if I want to go straight up, I can. No problem. Don't have to worry about stalling it. Plenty of horsepower. There's another view of it. Now I'm just kind of climbing in a, in a spiral here. Now we're going to do a stall test. So, um, well first I'm checking my ESC brake to see how well it's working. Props are still spinning. Um, these Atom RC, the stock ESCs, they don't have as strong of an ESC brake as others. Now I'm in manual and we're gonna do a stall test. I am, right now I am full stick back. Throttle's at negative one. I got the stick pulled far back. And even in manual, I'm able to keep it from tipping a wing. So right now, the plane is just literally descending flat. Um, no power. It's descending fast enough, keeping itself. And uh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's absolutely awesome. All right, picking up the power. Buzz back down by myself. You get, you get a good sense of speed when you're flying low to the ground. Get back next to this creek. I really do love this plane. It is a fantastic plane. If you're looking at getting your first plane, this is the plane to get. Of course, we'll loop this thing again. Like right now, I'm at about 10 amps, 46%. If you set your throttle to that, you can pretty much do whatever you want to and don't have to worry about stalling the plane out. You have your agility, you have your authority, you can pretty much do what you want.
lonesome tree right there. And boom. Still is very weird to look at yourself on camera. Pretty trippy experience. All right, now we're gonna test this climb. Um, we're gonna go into horizon mode here in just a second. Angle, horizon. Point the camera back. And now let's see how this thing climbs. We're gonna try to just go straight up. As you can see, my GPS speed falls, but my 3D speed stays up. It's because I'm climbing. Pulling 21 amps, and she can pretty much go straight up and down. I'm using my artificial horizon to try and keep the thing level. <laughs> and there we go, guys. Nice little climb. And that's it. Climbing up. You can see the Rivian truck and SUV electric car plant right there. And again, we'll put the camera and we'll face it down. And this is just a really cool way of videoing. And again, in acro mode, acro will help you hold the thing level, even inverted. You know, it's kind of keeping the plane where it needs to be. And right there, I just switched to angle mode and the plane just rolled itself over. Piece of cake. Now, I'm gonna get my speed up here. So we're doing about almost 90 3D speed. You're gonna notice the plane is gonna start, it starts to shake and almost pulls one way. This is definitely a plane that will this thing will come apart. If I go like 120, this plane is coming apart. I can almost feel it. So now what I'm gonna test, I have differential thrust, so I can use my yaw and I can use that to control the motor. And it's, you can't really tell, you can kind of tell that the motors are spinning a little different here on the video. Um, but see, like right now, I'm yawing the aircraft to the, to the right, and I'm using that differential thrust. Then I'm going the other way, and I was just trying to see if the camera could pick it up on the, uh, pick up the motor spinning differently, but you really can't tell. Using that differential thrust though, keeps this plane tracking nice and straight. You don't have that sidestepping of the tail. So we're coming up on 2,500 milliamps used out of this 5,000 pack. Now I've been flying hard. Um, we are going on 14 minutes right now. So you can almost get a half hour doing this if you run the battery all the way down. Here goes my return to home. I'm checking my return to home setup, making sure everything's working good. My return to home radius is still set to the maximum. Um, I did a video where I flew two planes at the same time and I set my swordfish to like just um, a loiter radius. I can't remember what it is. It's a ton. So right now I have the crosshair pointed on my car and it's loitering around home. And I'm almost point, I'm 900, yeah, it's probably a 900 foot radius, I'm guessing, because that's what my indicator says there at the bottom, which is too far. <laughs> you want to tighten that up unless you're trying to follow a plane. And you can see in Return to Home, it's just sipping the power. Uh, right here, I almost destroyed the plane because you're gonna see a telephone pole line here any second. Yep, forgot about that. 
go back by and buzz the tower. And we're gonna go ahead and line this thing up for landing. So because this plane flies so good and there's no wind, I'm gonna land this thing in manual. I'm always trying to improve my flying skills and flying in manual all the time I think just makes me a better pilot. So here we come, we're gonna coast it in, land it right here on the street. Just barely going. And look at that. Landed the thing without even looking forward. And that's it.